morning, Bucknoters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Monday, August 27th, 2018. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Bill Bank Green. It is game week, Bank. Uh, it's great to talk to you. Yeah, no, it's uh, the best time of the year. It's kind of like uh, Christmas you know, in the, in the uh, sports world for us guys that love college football. And uh, really looking forward to this week. It's going to be nice. It still doesn't feel like game week, but uh, here with uh, in a, a mere couple of hours, we'll be interviewing uh, interim head coach Ryan Day, associate head coach slash defensive coordinator Greg Shiannis. That's going to be nice talking some football with those guys. So make sure everybody keep it locked to Bucknuts all day. We're going to have tons of football stuff for you. And we're going to talk football on today's show with Bank. Um, let's start right with the offensive line, Mr. Green. I know the Offensive line has been, been your by far and away your biggest concern entering the entering camp, and they've pretty much been on lockdown over there. Although I know you have many sources, is that still by far and away the biggest concern as you look at this team? Yeah, it is to me. Um, you know, I think they have a lot of weapons offensively. The running backs are, you know, as good a pair as anybody has in the country. The receivers, you know, there's a lot of them, a lot of depth there, and they've played a lot of football amongst them. So you got a lot of experience. You know, the quarterback, I think he's going to be fine. He's inexperienced. <clears throat> but, you know, everything goes. The, the engine is the old line. And there are so many question marks there that we don't know. I mean, they could be amazing, but they could be average too. So, to me, that's what I want to see. And not so much want to see them against, you know, Oregon State or Rutgers, but want to see them against TCU and Penn State. So, you know, to me, that's the key to this whole season is this offensive line, and are they great? Are they kind of good, or are they just average? And then a question will, that will hopefully be answered tomorrow when the depth chart is released, but uh, what's your updated prediction on who the starting linebackers will be? Well, that's a good one. Um, I, I tend to think it's going to be Browning in the middle, um, maybe Malik Harrison on one side, maybe Keandre Jones, Pete Werner on the other side. I don't know. I've heard so much jumbling around and mix and match. And, you know, I, this has been, you know, the least amount of uh, info that's come out of camp ever. And, right. You know, I, they, I, I can confirm that, yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and you, you have to understand it. You know what I mean? These guys are scared to death. Um, and I don't blame them. You know, this has been a mess that Ohio State has just been through. And I get these guys just want to, these assistant coaches just want to concentrate on their jobs. And, you know, they're going to ignore a lot, of, a lot of stuff here in the last couple of weeks, and I get it totally. And tough boiling, that's going to be, I'm sure, you know, especially talking to Shiano later today, it's going to be a big topic of conversation. Obviously, tough boiling as a third year sophomore named one of seven captains. That says a lot about that young man that he, as a sophomore, third year sophomore, but still is named captain. But, um, but the the big question with him, how early in the season do you expect to see Tough Borland uh, back from that Achilles injury? Well, I sure don't expect to see him this week or next no. week. No, no. Um, and you go from there. You know, you depend on your medical staff and you depend on what you're seeing with your own eyes in practice. There's no reason to put him on the field this week at all. And I don't care if the medical staff clears him and the team thinks he's 100%. I, I think that would be kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, maybe work him in. If he's fine, you know, maybe work him in for a few series against Rutgers to get him ready to go against TCU. But boy, I'd want to be, I'd want to be darn sure that that guy was 100% before I put him on the field. You're really going to need him in November more than you need him, you know, in September. Quarterback Dwayne Haskins uh, taking the controls. That was going to be the biggest story by far in camp bank and then some other stuff happened i guess i uh, haven't really followed that other stuff very much but uh um seriously though, what are your expectations for haskins this season what are your reasonable expectations for him what should the average fan expect if he's protected and again you know capital i capital f if he's protected i think he's going to be really good um he's going to have a great running game in front of him which is Every quarterback, that's their dream, is to be able to run the ball. Um, then it opens everything up in the passing game. So, But he has to be upright, okay? He's not going to be – he's not J.T. Barrett, where if the protection breaks down, he tucks it and finds a seam and goes. I think Dwayne has the ability to do that, but you don't want him doing that. You don't want him taking hits. 
You don't want him running the zone read. Um, keep him upright. Keep that pocket clean so that he can go through reads, you know, something that we haven't seen in a long time at Ohio State, a quarterback that actually goes through progressions. That's who he is. So the, as much time as you can give him and as comfortable as he gets in that pocket where he doesn't have happy feet, he's not worried about getting drilled, um, I think he's going to be really special. But the caveat there is, you know, he needs to be protected. With you 100%, very well said. Um, just a couple more things, and uh, we will get you out of here. Uh, the aforementioned captains, and now nobody in football, in the history of football, uh, has more captains each year than Ohio State, but that's a topic for a different year. I think one year they had like 12. Um, <laughs> I, know it's only, I know it's only four official by the end of the year because they have to do the captain's uh, breakfast every year. It's supposed to be four per year, but they, they named seven this year. Um, Isaiah Prince. And then the three fifth-year senior wide receivers, Paris Campbell, Terry McLaurin, who were captains last year, Johnny Dixon now joins them. And then on defense, the aforementioned Tuff Borland, which, again, says a lot about him to be named a captain this early in his, in his career. Junior defensive end Nick Bosa and junior safety Jordan Fuller. Just uh, what stands out about that group to you, Bank? Maybe Jordan Fuller, you know, because we had – you know, a lot of these guys, we know a lot about them from the time they're sophomores in high school. We didn't know a lot about Jordan Fuller as a high school player. And everything we heard was about his leadership, his work ethic, how good he was in the classroom. And then when you see this happen this early in his career, it's like, hey, what we heard was true. You know, this guy is a really special off the field. You know, he's a pretty good player, had a pretty good year last year. But it's good to see – the great things we heard about him validated when they named him a captain. So that, that was the thing that stood out to me. Um, I have never spoken to Jordan Fuller ever before. He's probably the only guy in that roster that I've never spoken to. And, I don't know, it just kind of made me feel good that everything people had told me about him, you know, must be true. And that's good to hear. And real quick, I mean, Ryan Day, Greg Shiano later today, as I said, um, Obviously, they're just going to talk about football stuff, I would have to imagine. What questions would you like to hear both of them answer? Wow. I mean, Ryan, I I, I don't know. Anything anyone asks him, it's going to be great to hear what he has to say. This is a position that he didn't think he was going to be in for a while. Uh, That is a great question that you asked me. I mean, for Ryan Day, I would probably ask him. He's not going to answer it, but I would ask him, with him running the offense and Meyer not there, would, would should we expect to see a difference in strategy and philosophy between Ryan Day running the show and Urban Meyer having final say on the headset? He will not answer that, but that's something I would ask him. Um, for Shiano, I, you know, he's a pretty straightforward and pretty honest guy. I would flat out want to know if the secondary, you know, how are they progressing? You know, you've had a lot of guys walk out that door into the NFL's first-round picks lately. Can this group now stand up and meet that challenge? That's what I'd want to know. I think Shiano would answer that and answer it pretty honestly. Ryan Day has no chance that he would answer that question. So don't waste, don't waste yours, Dave. If you get one, don't waste it on that one. I definitely won't. I definitely won't. I can assure you of that. Thank you very much to Bill Ben Green, and thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning in the show. I appreciate it. I hope you have a great day. And, again, keep it locked to Bucknuts. We actually have real football to talk about all day. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best in band in the land.